start by introducing our first guest speaker, Lucy Watts.
Sorry, got my own there. And when I was 16, Mary had to sadly move on, and we lost the one person we had in the first two years of my illness that knew what to do and that could help us. And it was again Mum and I on our own in the dark, fighting for things that we didn't know were out there, which is very hard if you don't know. So, sorry. When I moved into adult services, it was really not a transition, it was like a big jump into the unknown. I was discharged from paediatric services with no support. And it was again, Mum and I fighting on our own. I was too shy to speak for myself. I was very, very shy. And then when I was uh, 17, a hospice came on board. And my hospice nurse acted as an advocate for many years. And again, another role model in my life that showed me how to speak for myself. So slowly but surely, and especially in adult services when you're expected to speak for yourself, I had to speak for myself. Mum wasn't there with me 24-7. And it kind of, that's, my advocates have been big role models in my life and that's kind of what I want to get across to you today. And then, this is where my charity work came in. When I was doing my end of life plan, I said to my hospice nurse and to my mum, I'm frightened I'll die and that my life won't have meant anything, I'll just be forgotten. My hospice nurse never forget that and two years later, she heard about an opportunity through Together for Short Lives who were the children's palliative care charity, who needed a young person to give a speech in Parliament. Having never given a speech before, my mum said, oh no, she won't. And I went, no, actually I will. <laughs> and so we did, and in 2013, in the November, I got up on stage and I gave my speech and ended to a standing ovation. And for someone that's so shy and had never done anything like that before, I wasn't only speaking for me, I was speaking for everybody then, and it changed the course of my life completely. I've done many things since. I'm very fortunate that I've been given a lot of opportunities. I've written forewords, given many speeches. I've been to Parliament, the Department of Health, appeared in documentaries and um, videos that have been shown at conferences all over the world. And to me that is so vital because it enables me to make a difference. My life counts and I can be a voice for other people. So though I don't advocate in the same way you all do, I go to events and bring the patient voice, as a patient myself, to these meetings and say, that's all good and well what you're doing, but if you don't know what the patients want and need, you're not going to get it right. So this is so important to me that I can go to these events and I can say, yes, what you're doing is right, but this is how it's going to impact on patients. Don't forget that patients will want this rather than that. And it's it's nice for me to make my life count. It's nice for me to be a voice for others. And for my work in this year in the New Year's Honours, I was awarded an MBE for services to young people with disabilities, which at the age of 22 is a huge honour. It's a huge honour. And I was also a Health Service Journal Top 50 Patient Leader in 2015. I don't do it for the recognition, but when someone recognises what you've done, as I, must, I know you all must feel, it's so lovely to feel that you've been recognised for the work you do. And that, that kind of has spurred me on to feel like I, I am making a difference and I can go on and do more. And sadly, uh, in 2015, our world got turned on our head. For Mum and I fighting on our own for so many years, Mum had learned all these specialist medical techniques to keep me alive and at home, but in mind she's not a nurse. She got diagnosed with a brain tumour and the bottom fell out of our world, especially mine. You know, the person I'd relied on for the seven and a half years of my illness, who'd cared round the clock, who'd learned all these techniques, suddenly couldn't care for me. What was I going to do? Fortunately, a friend of a friend is an advocate herself. She runs a centre for adults with special needs, so she agreed to step in. Three weeks, we managed to organise a complex 24-hour care package. Well, actually, we'd been fighting for two and a half weeks on our own. My advocate Jill came on board, and within two days, I had a care package. So we got the care package. And that means I have an ITU nurse with me from 7am to 11pm, and a carer then overnight to the night care. But sadly, our life would change yet again when following her surgery, my mum would suffer a stroke. 
So this interim care package that was going to be for six weeks then became long term. So again, we had to go through another battle to keep this package that we'd fought so hard to get. And I was told repeatedly over the course of getting these packages, you need to be in a care home. The only one that would take me at the age of 21 was an old people's home. But not only that, you won't be able to see your mum, you won't be able to go out, you won't be able to see your friends, you won't be able to have your assistance dog, and most of all, you won't be able to go to hospital appointments, because those are an unnecessary luxury. Not like my life depends on them or anything. And how can you say to a 21-year-old, you're going to be put in an old people's home, and you're never going to leave that room for the rest of your life, and expect me to go, okay, that's fine, which I wasn't going to do. But again, my advocate was there, she said, come put a foot down and said, that's not going to happen. You know it's not going to happen. And we, we eventually won this package. Um, my mum, after her surgery, obviously and after the stroke, she couldn't talk, she couldn't communicate, she couldn't move. She didn't even recognise me. And I've been through some horrific things in my life, but seeing my mum in a hospital bed, combative, completely unaware and not even knowing who I was, has got to be the worst feeling in the world. But slowly but surely, she regained her movement, her awareness, her speech, and came home six weeks later, but life is never going to be the same. It never will. We're different people, my mum's a different person, and we've had to, you know, cope. So even though she came home, which was a huge celebration, we've had to readjust to a new life together, and for mum, it's hard because she wants to help me, but obviously I've got these nurses and carers because she can't do it all herself. And it's been, it's been really hard. And the thing that's good about the advocate I have now is she lets me lead. She doesn't step in unless there's something she needs to add, she needs to reiterate something, or there's something she knows that I've not included. So, much as she's there for me and she does advocate for me, she also allows me to lead, which is important to me because it's, it's helping me to have the confidence to do it, but not over, overbearing or, you know, taking control of everything. And she's not medically trained, so she leaves all the medical section to me, but she deals with all the law, the rights, and, you know, helps me. But also not only that, she's been there through the whole journey supporting me. She's been a confidant, she's been a friend, you know, she's let me cry, she's let me scream, she's let me rant, she's let me do whatever I wanted. And she's just been this one constant person that's not changed in my life. So as well as helping me to speak for myself, she's been a support to help me cope. I, you know, I had to suddenly do my finances. I didn't even know what my PIN numbers were. I'd never had to do it. So I had to had a lucky guess, fortunately. So she helped me with all these new responsibilities, all these new problems that I was facing alone without my mum for the first time in my life. And she's been a really, really good, I suppose, support friend, but a role model again. It's someone I can look up to that is going to show me the way, but not do it for me. Um, and I want to just finish with, you know, my advocates have been my heroes, and I don't say that lightly. And I think all of you that are advocates are heroes, and you can be your client's hero. You have the power to make a big impact on your client's life, and I know from my advocates have on mine. So be your client's hero. Listen, support them, speak up for them, be a role model, but just be the hero. You can and you do make a difference. Thank you. Were there slides that you wanted to show? Yeah, I think it's worth it. So anybody can help lunch. with that? So there are only some photos, it wasn't anything important. You sure? Okay. Uh, you have, have to take yeah. any questions now. Do you want a glass of water? No, I'm alright, thank you. Uh, questions for Lucy? There's a roving mic or a couple of roving mics, I think, somewhere. <laughs> Anyone? No. Ah, there's the roving mics. Who's going to be brave? It's a big scary room. Lady here in the front. I'm from a small 
um, advocacy organisations that are really passionate about generic advocacy and I wondered which area of advocacy perhaps was a generic advocacy that you were able to access because I don't think we've been entitled to Care Act or in or, in or anything like that. So how do you hear about generic advocacy really? Sorry, is that again? How do you feel about generic advocacy? So advocacy for today and for everybody, not to like tick boxes. Yeah, well it's so important because we're, we're all individuals. My advocacy has been kind of through social care, through equipment, not rather than medical advocacy. I've never had medical advocacy. We've had the social care, but that should be advocacy for everybody. And it's not one size fits all. I'm a big hater of this, you fit in one box and that's it. Everyone is different. We all have different needs. And, you know, there's lots of different types of advocacy, but sometimes people need an advocate that spans different areas, not just six advocates for different places, but a whole, you know, an advocate that can, you know, take lots of different areas and work with the patient. Okay. Sorry? Hello, uh, totally. Um, you can hear me? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> just so that's really inspiring. I just wondered whether the life that you've now got and the life that you want and deserve, has a personal budget or personal health budget been key to that or an integrated budget? I have a continuing healthcare package at the moment provided by an agency. I've always had self-run packages in the past, but I'm on an emergency package. So 18 months on, we're still on the emergency package, but eventually I will get a personal health budget, which we're fighting for at the moment. So I'll, have, I'll employ my own nurses, my own carers, and get that flexibility, choice and control, which is horrible for me. I've got so little control. So to get that control of my life is something that is really important to me. Anyone else? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions for Lucy? Okay, well, a big... Oh. Go on, over there. <laughs> this is the way Kate keeps fit. <laughs> hello, hello, Tistic. Um, you sort of said that your advocates have been your heroes, but what are the things that they do that you is makes them a good advocate? Because I've been advocating for since the dinosaurs, but. Um, I just wondered what you want from an advocate and what you think other people might want from an advocate. It's, so, some, it's someone that listens, it's someone that works with you, so you work as a team. I think that's so important, you've got to be a team together, you've got to listen, and where it's possible, I know not every, you know, can't teach everybody to speak for themselves, but where possible, show them how to have a voice, show them that their voice matters. Show them that you are there solely for them. You've not got purse strings or an ulterior motive. You're there exactly for them. It's make, in a way, make them feel like the only person in the world. It's going to sound very odd. But when, it, when you're made to feel like a burden, which I have been made to feel, you know, you're too expensive, you're too complex, you're expecting too much. When you've got someone that's there, that doesn't matter doesn't care about their budget, doesn't care about what someone else has said. They're there for you, your needs, your wishes, and just being a role model. You know, my, that's why I say my advocates have been. They've shown me how to speak for myself. They've shown me that I matter. And they've shown me that I do have a voice at the end of the day. Time for one more. <coughs> Okay, well, a big thank you to Lucy. <laughs>